How to install Jenkins on Debian 11. Here's today's starting point. I have a fresh installation of Debian 11. Down in the description of this video is a link off to a gist that will have links to the websites and the commands that I run. Prior to starting recording, I did a few items on this Debian instance. First off, as root, I ran apt update and apt upgrade, just to go ahead and get all the packages upgraded to the most recent versions. I also made a change to my default editor from nano to vim, just because I like vim better than nano. Our first step is that we need to install a version of Java. I've decided that we're going to install the Adoptium version of Java, Timurin 17 JDK. We're going to follow the instructions provided at adoptium.net. The link off to this page in Adoptium is over in the gist. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll make sure all the packages are present. So we'll go ahead and copy this, paste it in, and we needed to install app transport HTTPS. So that's updated. That's good. Let's go ahead and create a directory for the GPG key. And we will copy this, paste that over here. And now we need to go ahead and create the apt repository. Now let's go ahead and copy the definition for this. Make sure we only get what we need. Let's paste this in. So we're going to echo out the deb and we're going to put it into adoptium.list. Hit enter. And let's go back over here. Now we're ready to go ahead and install the version that we want. So first off, we need to go ahead and do an update to pick up that new repository change. And then finally, let's go ahead and do an apt install for Timurin 17 JDK. We'll paste that in. It should ask us, is this what you want to do? And we're going to say yes. Let's go ahead and verify our Java version. So we'll say Java dash version. And we'll see at time of recording, the version of Java 17 that was installed was 17.0.6. Now that we have Java installed, now we're ready to go ahead and install Jenkins. So we'll go over to Jenkins.io, we'll click on the download link, and then we'll take us to the download page. We're going to do install a stable version, or the LTS version, so we'll scroll down under the LTS column, and we'll select Ubuntu slash Debian. And from here, we can see a list of the commands that we need to run. The first thing that we need to do is set up the key, so we'll copy this curl line, go back over and paste that in. And then next, we need to create the repository entry. So we'll copy this. And then much like what we did with the Java installation, we're going to run apt update. So now we can see here that the Jenkins repository is seen. Since we've already installed the JDK version that we want to use, we can skip this line. And now we're ready to go ahead and install Jenkins. So we'll say apt install Jenkins. We can see here from the output that it was unpacking Jenkins 2.375.3, which is the latest version of LTS at the time of recording. Let's first check to see if Jenkins is running. So we'll say PS, AUX, WW, and we're going to grep for Java. And we can see here the top line is owned by Jenkins, and we can see it's user bin Java. There's a dash D for headless, and then we see dash jar, Jenkins Java jar. Let's look at a better way to see what's going on with our systemd process. So we'll say system ctl dash dash full status Jenkins. We can see here that the process is loaded and is active and running. We can also see that our under the C group line, we can see that same PS line that we just ran. There's our user bin Java our headless, our dash jar for the Jenkins war file, and then web root and HTTP port. And finally, if we scroll back left, we can see a little snippet of the bottom of the log from our Jenkins process. What do we need to do if we want to make some changes to our startup parameters? Let's say we want to add in some extra dash Ds, and we want to add in some extra values here at the end of the startup process. First thing that we will need to do is stop the Jenkins process. So let's quit out of this and say system CTL stop Jenkins. And let's go ahead and run our status one more time and we can see that the process that's for active is actually inactive or dead. So let's quit out of this and then let's type system CTL edit Jenkins. And what we'll see here is at the top of the file, it's telling us that we'll be editing an override comp file that is in the Jenkins service D directory. So the values that we want to override will live in between this comment, anything between here in the comment, and this, lines below this comment, will be discarded. So everything that we're going to be putting in is going to be right here in this section. Now below that, 
we see the full configuration for the systemd process for Jenkins. We see user definitions, we see environments. And in fact, if I go back up top, what we'll see here, I went right past it, we see a unit section and we see a service section. And at the bottom, what we'll see is an install section. So the changes that we're gonna be making are gonna be within the service section. So let's go back up top and I'm going to paste in the values that I want to add. So in this case, I have the service block defined because I want these environment variables to be inside of service. The first environment variable I'm setting is Java Ops, and the second one I'm going to add is Jenkins Ops. Now, if I look for Java Ops in this file, we'll see the top one that we're getting ready to add, but if we look below, we see that Java Ops was only defined as headless equals true. So I'm keeping headless equals true. That's something I do want to have but then I'm adding in some other dash Ds, one for preferring IPv4 stack, another one where I'm defining my own tempter. Now I could let tempter for Java just be wherever it decides to be for the operating system, but I like owning my own temp directory. Now that also means that I'm going to need to create that directory. So we'll visit that again in just a moment. I'm also adding in two time zone variables to set my time zones to New York. And then finally for Jenkins ops, if we take a look for Jenkins Ops in this file, there's the first one that we're getting ready to add. But if we look below, it was an empty variable. So these are just arbitrary additional arguments to pass into Jenkins. So in my case, what we're wanting to do is we want to pass in a dash dash plugin root. And this location is where when the controller starts up, instead of exploding the plugin files into Jenkins home plugins, those extracted plugins now will go to Varkash Jenkins plugins. That way I keep my Jenkins home directory as clean as possible. So let's go ahead and save this. Remember I said that we needed to go ahead and create that temp directory because I'm defining that temp directory. So I'm going to go ahead and make dir for varcash Jenkins. And since varcash Jenkins actually already exists, but I've just created that file there, I created it as root. So I need to change the ownership of that directory to Jenkins Jenkins. So instead of just doing it on temp, I could just do it on temp. I've decided to go ahead and just re-own Varkash Jenkins. Before we try to start it up, let's take a look at our status. We'll say full status Jenkins. What we'll see here is our loaded line that we saw before when it was running. We see our active line, but in between now we have a new definition for drop-in that is our override comp file. Now, how do I know that the changes I put into that override comp file actually will allow the service to start up? What I can run is systemd analyze verify Jenkins.service. And since we didn't receive any kind of errors back, we know that this service at least has validated and should start up as we would expect. We can verify the output of that just by doing a dollar sign question mark and we can see the status of that was zero. So everything should be okay. Let's go ahead and start up our Jenkins process. So we'll say systemctl start Jenkins. And let's go ahead and check our status again. So we'll say systemctl dash dash full status Jenkins. We see our loaded and active, we're active running. We see our drop-in is there as well. And if we go ahead and scroll right, what we'll see is under the C group section, we'll see our user bin Java. There's our headless true. We see our definition for our IPv4. We see our tempter definition. If we go all the way to the end, we'll see our plugin root attribute. If we go back left, what we'll see is, again, the little snippet of the log that's running. So it's actually the bottom of the log at this point. But we see that our password is here to go ahead and start setting up our controller. So I'm going to copy this password. I'll quit out of this. Let's go over to Jenkins 8080. We can paste in the password here. Click on Continue. We'll go ahead and install the suggested plugins. Let's go ahead and create our user. So we'll just create an admin user here. Click on Save and Continue. We'll verify our Jenkins URL. That is fine for this. We'll click on Save and Finish, and then click on Start Using Jenkins. At this point, you can go ahead and start creating jobs and start using your Jenkins controller. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.